Hi, everybody. Our next talk is starting. It's uh, called I++, run your FOSS off. <laughs> and please welcome Ruhl Standard. Okay, can you hear me? Okay. Um, so once a year, the students of Leuven gather to run their asses off for 24 hours long. I'm talking about the 24 hour run. It's in late October. It starts uh, on a Tuesday at 8 p.m. and it goes on till Wednesday at 8 p.m. again. It's organized by Local Sport, which is the sports division of the general student organization in Leuven. Uh, TSZ, which is a technical support division. They do all of the technical stuff that isn't IT. And Ulysses that do all of the IT related stuff. And of course, the participating teams. Um, so um, Ulysses is a student organization uh, based in Leuven. And they provide IT students for other services. So it's service, uh, students that provide IT services for other students. And it's a FOSS-minded organization. So that means that um, they try to use as much open source software as possible, and that they try to promote it as much as possible. Um, they offer cheap web hosting for students and personnel at K Leuven. Um, this is our server room. It's mostly second-hand servers or like um, uh, old desktops. Um, sometimes we like to hack into our own servers because we locked ourselves out. Uh, <laughs> we do workshops, like workshops about Git or LaTeX or like other um, more advanced system administration workshops. This is one about LaTeX. Um, and we do a yearly job fair. So you can check out the job corner for uh, this poster um, for open source minded companies. Um, and you can spot me on that picture there, representing MWeb, that's the company I work for. And so at a 24 hour run, Ulysses provides a network, a wired network and Wi-Fi. And since 2013, Ulysses has also been responsible for doing the lab counting. So this is kind of what the track looks like. It's 520 meters long, so it's outside of the normal 400 meters uh, athletic start track. And there are three checkpoints. So they start at the main checkpoint and they run counterclockwise to checkpoint two and then checkpoint three. Um, these extra checkpoints are mostly for redundancy, not so much to make sure that they run in the right direction. Because we will assume if you go from checkpoint one to checkpoint three that you pass checkpoint two, but we just missed it. So if you then go from three to two, we assume that you passed one. And if you go from two to one, we will assume that you passed uh, three, so you'll have two laps. But usually there aren't enough eyeballs on people to make sure that they don't do that. Um, so this checkpoint kind of looks like this. Uh, it's a box. Uh, we call that the reader. And inside of that box is um, a UHF RFID reader, a Raspberry Pi Type B, and a switch connecting those two and connecting that to all the other uh, checkpoints. And the checkpoint has two antennae um, in uh, opposite polarization. Um, and this is kind of what the main checkpoint looks like. So. Um, the two, checkpoint two and three are unmanned, but the first one, they were actually sitting there um, looking out to, uh, to the runners that are coming towards us. And then you can see the, in, you can really, in tinyly, you can see the box uh, somewhere on the left and then the antenna there. Um, and we sit uh, <coughs> uh, in there. So, um, and they, we use uh, RFID tags, so these are belt type tags, and we put them inside of these batons that we make out of PVC tube with caps on either side, and then we put handlebar tape around it that's used for bicycles. So they're a bit nicer to hold and nicer to pass. Um, so the software that we use is called I++, and that's the source code there, not really. Uh, it's a bit more complicated than that than just incrementing every lap. So it's uh, written in Java, which takes 30 seconds to start on the, the readers, but still 
it runs quite well on these Raspberry Pis. Um, so there's the reader, that's what runs on the Raspberry Pi. The processor, where all of the uh, uh, reads are accumulated and the score is calculated. And the UI is um, what we use to, and, and there's a UI component and a publisher that publishes the scores live. Um, so this is how the reader and the processor kind of com communicate. So there's um, this UHF RFID reader uh, that and the, the reader that's on the Raspberry Pi. And that one communicates using LLRP, that's the low level reader protocol with this uh, RFID reader and then puts all of the updates onto a Redis database. Um, so it has a list of updates. Those are, those are all uh, in JSON. And then they are published um, to, uh, and they are published on a channel called updates and then a number because um, uh, bub subs channels are global in Redis. Um, and then the processor subscribes to uh, that channel and then whenever it gets uh, a new update, it will retrieve that from the server, uh, from uh, the reader. So this means that if the connection is broken between the processor and the reader, then at a later time, the processor can still go ahead and get all of those old updates that it missed. Um, <clears throat> And so this processor, it gets all of these updates and it stores them as events in a PostgreSQL database. And, this, and next to these events, it stores snapshots. So it starts with an empty snapshot and then everything is affected by these events. And this means, because we're keeping all these snapshots, this means that if there's an event that happened in the past, we can still apply that and still recalculate the states from that point, and you might think that's a lot of data, but really, it's only 24 hours, we're keeping you know, megabytes of data, but that's still fine. Um, and then the UI only communicates with the processor using these commands that it sends, also on a Redis pops up channel, and then uh, notifications are also sent out to the UI via Redis, and then the UI retrieves all of the events and the snapshots from the PostgreSQL database. So this is kind of what the UI looks like. I know it's really pretty, but I wrote it in like a weekend. Uh, I use JWT for that. That's what we make at MWeb. <laughs> That's the Java web framework. Um, and um, so if you look at the cyan bars, the cyan bars are um, our prediction of where the runners are at that particular time. And then the red bars, they indicate the last checkpoint that they passed. So when we're sitting in this main checkpoint, we can keep an eye out. Like it's, if the bar is almost full, we can know like, oh, number two is almost going to arrive. And we can keep an eye out for that. And then also from this UI, we can uh, update messages. So we can always push the status of the event out. So like if there's an emergency or the, the event is over, stuff like that, we can immediately update the, from this UI. And we have a start and a stop button um, to indicate the start and the stop time. It's not fixed. Um, and we have a safety for that so that you don't accidentally click it. Click it. Um, and then for every team, you can look at three charts or just as many charts as there are readers. And this indicates how long it w was since the last read. So um, looking at these charts, you can kind of uh, gauge whether things are going wrong because normally a team that, like Apollon, it's a sports um, student organization, so they run at a pretty constant speed. So if you see like a peak there or you see like a low there, you'll know that mm, maybe we missed uh, a read or maybe uh, we have read too many, which happens rarely, like pretty much never, but anyway. <laughs> um, and then the publisher is the component that publishes the, the score. Um, so it, it, that can take it from Redis and from our PostgreSQL database and push it out to a JSON file, but it can also receive it over HTTPS and push it out over HTTPS. And this means that we can chain these publishers after each other. So 
we put one publisher inside of our local accounting system network, which is firewall, no one can access it. Um, and it get, gets all of the updates from Redis and PostgreSQL and then publishes it over HTTPS to our web server in our Ulysses basement uh, and that pushes it out to a JSON file. And that is then so served using just a regular web server. We use Nginx. Um, and there's just a static HTML page there um, with some JavaScript that pulls the JSON every three seconds and then um, it can show like some live bars and like people are actually often think that we're really tracking in real time where they are because the bars seem so accurate. <laughs> but that's just because people just run at a pretty constant speed. <laughs> um, in 2013, sadly, the, server, the software wasn't really working. Well, the software was working, but the hardware had some problems. But then 2014, it was working flawlessly. And this is our, uh, and even though the weather was really terrible that year, there was a lot of wind. Um, 2015 was also a good addition. 2016, I don't have a picture of that. 2017, that's uh, the team for the last time. Um, and this 24-hour run is not the only n-hour run. Um, Leuven is the only one that I know of that's 24 hours long. But, the, for example, in Antwerp, there's a 10-hour run, uh, which is also done by Ulysses, which is good, because then Ulysses can test this system twice a year uh, on real on a, at a real event. And then um, in Ghent, there was a 12 hour run, our friends of these guys, <laughs> they do it there. Uh, and so Zeus, uh, they're called, and they use uh, Bluetooth 2.0 for that. And so even my hometown of Medix Plus, I don't know if anyone has ever heard of Medix Plus, it's a tiny town. Even they have like a six hour run, and I, I have nothing to do with that one. <laughs> Um, so what if everyone could easily and cheaply organize events like this? That would be great. Um, now, we would like to use I++ for that, uh, but at the moment there are some problems with this system still. So it's not user-friendly enough yet, so we want to move towards where maybe it's easy enough for someone who can like install a blog on shared hosting, can install it. You know, that's like, I think, the thresholds. So it's a little, I don't know, like your cousin who kind of knows, knows computers can use it. Um, it's relatively expensive because these uh, readers, they can cost like thousands of euros. Um, so it would be, would be nice to use like hardware, like for example, uh, iBeacon, uh, like these blue, Bluetooth low energy kind of beacons that just send out a pulse every uh, few times per second and put those in our batons. Um, and then the checkpoints could just be old or cheap Android phones. That would make it a lot cheaper. And at the moment, it's kind of specialized for a trusted LAN. So Redis is not really suitable for like other kinds of network deployments. And VPNs are hard to configure for just someone who kind of knows uh, only a little bit about uh, computing. So. Uh, if you want to contribute or if you want to organize something similar, you can go to our GitHub page and also check out the source code. Um, I will, I have some time for questions, but I'll also hang out outside if you have more questions. And thank you.